focus, if you will. Mustafa Suleiman is the co-founder of AI research lab DeepMind, which was acquired by Google and co-founder and CEO now of Inflection AI. His new book out today, The Coming Wave, Technology, Power, and the 21st Century's Greatest Dilemma, uh, you were one of the originals, um, the OGs, if you will, in the <laughs> AI revolution, and uh, want to talk about it. Uh, it's called The Coming Wave, and we were just talking about the, you know, getting the book out now because you think that the wave is about to, not crest, but it is coming and coming fast. Where will, it, you know, how quickly is this moving? Well, I mean, intelligence is the most valuable tool we have as humans, right? And what we're seeing is that we're able to distill that intelligence, the ability to plan, predict, organize information, create new things into a piece of software, into an algorithm, and it's getting better and better. So with every new big training run, people will have heard of GPT-4 or GPT-3, each of these models are 10 times larger in terms right. of the total amount of compute that's used to produce them than the previous one. How much, though, is this a hype cycle? And the reason I ask is, I think a lot of us have played with ChatGPT, and a lot of people even use it on a daily basis or a weekly basis, but mostly for things that are not mission critical yet. Right. Right. When does it become mission critical? Well, if you compare GPT-4 versus GPT-3, you can see what an order of magnitude feels like in terms of compute and how different the capabilities are. With each new order of magnitude, the models get more controllable. And that's the key thing, is you want them to be factually accurate and then you want them to produce the same behavior over and over again. And that's the remarkable trend that we've seen. As they get bigger, right. they don't get more dangerous, they actually get easier to control. How much are we supposed to worry, though, that I think even you are not completely clear on how it all works? <laughs> Sometimes we talk about hallucinations, that's the sort of phrase in the business, when it sort of starts to say stuff that nobody understands why it's doing that. Is that unto itself a problem? Well, look, hallucinations are definitely an issue, right? At the moment, they don't reliably produce the same output over and over again. However, again, if you compare them over the previous two or three generations, they're doing a much, much better job. And so in my book, I try to lay out what the trajectory might look like over the next five to ten years if we move through these orders of magnitude. Okay, so let's, let's do that. Five years from now, we're sitting at this table. How has our life, everybody here, changed? Everybody is going to have an intelligent assistant, a personal intelligence that knows you, that is super smart, that understands your personal history, and can actually hold state. It can preserve things in its working memory. So it will be able to reason over your day, help you prioritize your time, help you invent, be much more creative. It'll be a research assistant, but it'll also be a coach and a companion. And so it's going to feel like having a intelligence as a commodity, cheap, widely right. available, making, us, making everybody smarter and more productive. OK, but when you say that, so, OK, so for this interview, I knew this interview was coming up. So I, I got a PDF of the book, which was sent to me. Uh, we also had a producer who went through the book as well. Right. Um, we looked at a lot of different, different things. I went and read an, uh, an old article about you in Wired magazine. Right. All, OK. So the question, though, is that took me some time to, to do that. And I was sort of Googling around and doing, doing some stuff. And we've, we've met before and known each other. So but in the future, would I just say Mustafa is going to be on the show tomorrow? Just break it down for me, write five questions for how is this, how would this, and would the five questions be good? Well, in my new company, Inflection, we have an AI called Pi, which stands for personal intelligence. And it is the ultimate synthesizer of information. I mean, that's what a smart aid will do for you. Capture the key points that you need to know at any given moment, given some context, exactly as you've just described. So the way I see it is that in five years, everybody is going to have their own chief of staff. It's going to intimately know your personal information, be completely aligned with your interests, and help you to manage and process all the information you need to okay, consume. Okay, let me ask you a different one. We both have those already. I think, <laughs> I think, okay, I think so you do too, don't so you? Joe, Joe, just went to, Joe just went to Telluride last That's week. That's true. And in, in white jeans. But here's, here's the question. Not really. In the future, <laughs> so, but for Joe or anybody to go on a trip or to go to a conference or an event, Typically, you might get invited to the, the event, and I'm thinking there's lots of people in, in our audience who've had this experience. You have to email back to the event organizer saying, yes, I'm going to come. Then you have to uh, organize the hotel. You might have to get the uh, flight. You have to get the car to the airport, potentially. You might need another car from the airport to the hotel. 
you might need to cancel some meetings that were happening during the event that you had already planned. I mean, there's sort of, I could go through sort of 15 or 20 permutations that oftentimes a lot of people who are in our audience actually have an assistant who handles all of this. Right now, I don't think you could do that using... We, you definitely can't do that right now, right? But we are definitely on a trajectory where all of those capabilities that you've just described are totally possible. We just say possible. go, and it just happens magically. Exactly. And these AIs are going to be able to call other AIs. They'll be able to phone other humans. They'll be able to look up any arbitrary knowledge source, interact with it, and make decisions to try and right. do that productivity. Okay, let's described. talk about mission critical stuff, because I also want to talk about security and some of the misinformation issues and, and worries. But... In terms of mission critical, one of the things that's fascinating, I don't know if you saw Elon Musk was on uh, X about a week ago, showing off uh, some new uh, features of the full driving uh, right. service that he says is based on AI. And it's because it's no longer an if then program from some of the stuff that was being done before. Now it's actually being done through neural nets and, and the like. Does that, do you say to yourself, this is, boy, this is totally going to work? Do you say, I'm completely worried about this? What happens if it hallucinates? Well, of course, it, look, for sure it's going to work. The question is over what time scale, right? So to your point about hype, sure, there are some people who have been overstating fully self-driving cars for quite a long time. The, the challenge is that putting stuff into practice in the physical real world is 10 times harder than doing it in software. When you're just interacting conversationally with somebody in software, that's a much right. lower barrier to entry. What's the scariest part of this for you? Look, this is going to make everybody much more productive. A kilo of grain today only uses 2% of the labor that it, that it needed 100 years ago. We're on the same trajectory for white collar work, for knowledge work. Depends, you know, you can argue whether it's 10 years, 20 years, or 30 years. We're on that trajectory. So, so the, the jobs question is a very real one, and that means it's going to be a question of how we handle tax and are you, are you more worried about that, or are you more worried about the safety and security and misinformation and all of those other issues? Well, short term, I'm worried about misinformation because these are known problems and, the, and these tools are just going to exacerbate those known problems. It's going to be radically cheaper for anybody to be able to produce very convincing misinformation, video, right. audio, text. That's a known challenge. First, uh, uh, blue collar and agriculture work was disrupted. And you know, you need one out of a hundred people now. Now you just said it's going to happen to white collar work. What, who's that lead? Well, in the long term, it means that we have to adapt and we have to find more creative tasks that make us more productive and capable. So we are going to have busy work, digging holes and filling them back up. It, it, we're back to universal basic income. No, that's what and flying is. around we in a spaceship, playing like on, in the movie Wall, like just big fat people playing video games and, and getting paid to eat. Look, the reality is, if this makes us much more efficient and productive, it will also give us time to be much more creative, attack all the scientific challenges that we need to attack. This is going to be the most productive and valuable decade in the history AI of our species. Should, AI should, this should be solving all the tasks that we're trying to. When it, when it, that's the singularity, when it has a billion times as much knowledge as our knowledge. Well, we I won't have to do anything. I don't worry so much about the singularity. Mean, I, I think that the singularity is sort of too far out, if you like. I thought it was coming in. I'm counting on it coming in my lifetime, so I can live well, for it. Very well, 2040, right? Yeah, I mean, we're, yeah, we're close. No, when do you think it happens? I, I, have, I, I couldn't possibly predict a date. It's too esoteric an idea for me to really wrap what's my head the around. Cool, we got to run, but what's the coolest thing you're using AI for right now? How much of it did it help you with your book? Actually, the first few pages of my book were written by an AI. So see if you find it convincing. Um, but it definitely frames the issues. It's very balanced, considers the harms on both sides. It's very honest. It's an open account of, you know, the, prom the promise and peril of AI in this, in this coming wave. It's called the coming wave. Um, Mustafa, thank you. Appreciate thank you. It. Appreciate it. it. Thanks a lot. We're coming right back.